But if Bill Gates doesn't like puns, why does he give the name word to computer program when the word word already is a word for a word? The, the earliest memory I have is a memory about the frustration about language. And it was me and my father and my older brother and we were going to the summer house and it was sort of off season, it was like, I think it was in the autumn. My, my elder brother was already back then, uh, in his early teens, a fervent record collector. collector. Like he would use all his pocket money uh, to buy records and he would then come home and play these records and I, I found this thing with pop music and records extremely exciting and we were going to the summer house and my father or my brother or someone had said it's about plattor uh, which is a Swedish word and it denotes a flat object and that flat, ob flat object can could be a record because Platta is slang for a recorded disc, but it can also mean a tile, you know, which is another flat object which you put on the floor. I didn't know that, I just thought it meant records. Because I, I was so naive then, when I was two and a half, or maybe three and a half, that I thought there's only one word for each thing. So we came to the summer house and there were no records. There were just these tiles and and I couldn't understand how, how this, like, why this was. Like, how, how language could be so stupid that there could be the same word for a completely different thing. And it made me very frustrated uh, because there were no records. It was no fun. It was like the, just this building material. When Marco Polo brought porcelain to Europe in 1295, the Chinese had already been making it for 15. Marco Polo. The Chinese had already been making it for 1500 years. But in Europe, it was a new thing. And Marco wondered what to call this shiny Chinese thing. Now, to Marco, the shininess of porcelain reminded him of the cowrie shell. Porcelana. So porcelana became the word for porcelain as well. But even before porcelana was the word for cowrie shell, porcelana was the word for a very small pig. From porcello, small pig, from porco, pig. So the longer the word, the smaller the pig. Or the bigger the pig, the shorter the word. But why was a shiny shell called a very small pig? A lot of jokes are built upon using uh, these words that uh, sound the same but mean two different things. Puns. And of course there are theories and, and probably even Freudian theories about laughter being basically a nervous reaction. And it's sort of, by pointing out the pun, you're pointing out this weakness uh, in the system of representation, which somehow is also just, you know, you know a weakness uh, in existence, in its totality, but because what are we without language? So IBM called Bill Gates. And Bill made a graphic user interface for IBM's personal computers, and he called it Windows. But calling Windows Windows was a bad idea. Through a window, you can look into your computer. But to really get in there, don't you want a door or a gate? How about calling Windows Gates? That would be a promise of full access. But maybe Bill Gates is too shy to call Windows Gates. Because what do we really know about Bill Gates? What do we know about how Bill Gates feels about himself and his name? Face it, most people who work ridiculously hard 
do it because they hate themselves. Or maybe Bill Gates doesn't like puns, words that sound the same but mean completely different things. Maybe Bill Gates feels bullied at airports when people say, that's gate 21, Mr. Gates. <laughs> but if Bill Gates doesn't like puns, why does he give the name word to computer program when the word word already is a word for a word? At least it should be called words, unless Bill wants us to believe that it's for very short texts. And doesn't Microsoft sound like something you put into a washing machine? I think the idea to call Windows Gates is brilliant. But maybe Bill just hasn't thought about it. But if Bill has thought about it and he still doesn't like it, Bill could call Windows Doors. And that could be a slogan, Microsoft Doors. Don't just look, break on through to the other side. I, I find humor as, as what, what can I, humor as an academic field, I find it interesting. Um, it's so interesting to try to figure out what makes things funny. I, I, I find this very, very fascinating. What is, what is it that makes things funny? And also that this humor thing is like really in between, really right in between the brain and the body. And, and at the same time, while being right in between the brain and the body, it's those things separately very, very much. Like it's like, as you know, you, people usually say that humor is the last thing you learn when you learn a foreign language because it's the most sophisticated thing of a language. Um, while at the same time, you know, it makes you laugh, it makes you fall back to uh, these uh, uh, physical convulsions which you can't control. So that's one, of, of one aspect of it. And, and I, I really find this, you know, why are certain things funny? I find this very, very interesting. And, and the second thing is that I have a passion for language. I, I love language and I'm very interested in language. And there's also something about language that already from a very, very early age makes me uncomfortable. I'm driving the blues away, I'm driving the blues away Because it's so difficult to talk myself through the day I'm driving the blues away, I'm driving the blues away Because it's so difficult to talk myself through the day Language frustrates us, it, it gives us the blues uh, But it, it, uh, it's also something that uh, allows people to sing. Like, I, you know, I, I, I'm one of those people who never understood poetry. I was, thought it was too abstract. But, but, but since I started to work on this, I suddenly, you know, actually got interested in poetry uh, because these poets actually, you know, they, 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 they really try to use language to, to make it sing. And I find this is very, very, very fascinating. So sometimes language gives us resistance uh, and sometimes it allows us to do wonderful things. Language is more like a pig that likes to do things its own way. Thank you.